Well, I became interested in the interaction of good news and bad news during these conversations because almost every movie you watch, TV shows, popular media, you see a lot of these good news, bad news jokes. And then when you look to the scientific literature um, about pre uh, physicians prescribing how to give bad news to their patients or managers giving bad news to their um, employees, you see a lot of these vague recommendations to incorporate some type of hopeful information, positive information, or good news, but nobody really gets into the details of where that good news should come, how it should be used in these conversations, and what it might do for the news recipients and for the news givers. So the studies that we conducted showed that how people want to get bad news and good news actually differs quite a bit from how people want to give good and bad news. So we see this very di these divergent preferences where news recipients really want to hear bad news first. They want to get the bad news over with, end on a high note, but then you see kind of an opposite pattern in news givers. They want to tiptoe into these bad news conversations by giving good news first. So what we've actually found is that where good news actually occurs in a conversation has a lot of substantial outcomes for how the news recipients handle that bad news. So if you give the news in ways that they prefer, so giving them bad news first, you actually find that news recipients, uh, they feel better at the end of the conversation. So you've ended on a high note, they feel better. This however comes at the expense of them actually taking some action. So when you give good news first and end with bad news, you actually see that news recipients have a little spike in worry that seems to motivate them to take action. So this is really important if you are a doctor who really needs your patients to adhere to their medical treatment, you need them to take their medication, or you need them to get some more diagnostic tests, you need them to do something to help improve their, te uh, their health. And it's really important for managers who want to inspire some productive workplace behaviors for their employees. And then finally, I think this really applies to everyone because at some point we always have to, we are going to have to give bad news to somebody else. And the way we incorporate positive information or good news can really affect how our recipient is going to handle that, whether they're going to feel good or whether they're going to take some action. Again, you see a lot of these vague recommendations that adding some good news during a bad news conversation is a positive thing. Um, the study that was just published shows that where that positive information arrives in the conversation has some very important outcomes. And that's a recommendation that you haven't seen in the literature as of yet. You kind of just see, just throw some good news in there somewhere. The other recommendation that you see a lot is that people should use these bad news sandwiches. So they should give some good news, then give the bad news, but then end on a high note again. And my doctoral dissertation focused on how these bad news sandwiches occur when people are giving news in person or over email. And so again, I think um, the, the published studies show that again, this emphasis on good news, especially ending on the good news, may make fe people feel good and it might make them uh, leave the conversation feeling happy, but it might not get them to actually take some action. So again, these bad news sandwiches or these vague recommendations, um, I caution people to use them as a golden ticket to bad news delivery because it's much more complicated than that. So even something very small as news order, so where the good news comes, can really have a bigger, big influence on what people are going to do with the bad news.